Dr. Homebrew is brought to you by Five Star Chemicals, providing safety and cleaning supplies for brewing, distilling, and winemaking at fivestarchemicals.com. Dr. Luck. Stand aside, nurse. I'm Dr. Homebrew. Welcome to the show, everybody. Dr. Homebrew, back in the studio, ready to talk some homebrew, ready to talk a bunch of stuff. <clears throat> As Keith is going to open a two-liter bottle of seltzer water. Refresh. refresh E. There's an E at the end of refresh E. refresh E. Man, seltzer water's so good. When I was, I was a young guy, I, I hated seltzer water. I thought it was trash. I can't get enough of it now. Is that two liters going to be gone by the time the show's over? That's the goal. <laughs> I don't drink seltzer water. There's too much good beer in the world to mess with other <laughs> beer no, other carbonated water. beverages. I, I do have a friend who tends to make like uh, pilsners and hellases, and uh, you know hellases. That's a weird thing. Hell I Yeah, yeah. But he he adds uh, seltzer water to the beer when he drinks them, just so he can drink. I don't know if it's more or. You know, to space it out or what is, what's Spritz going it on? Up, lighten yeah, it up. It's always like, oh, I'm gonna make a light version of this. I'm just gonna add seltzer water to it. <laughs> is how I'm gonna do it. So, I think that's. I mean, that's the way to go. Jamil, a heretic, will take the shallow grave, the porter, robust porter, and add seltzer water to it in like a half half, and he calls it a watery grave, and it makes it just a pretty nice mild. <laughs> it's pretty good, and that's a thing. It's a mixed drink, I guess, if you want to call it. You can uh, order that over at Heretic. Um. Before we get uh, into all of that, though, of course, I want to thank our fine sponsor, our title sponsor of the show, Five Star Chemicals. Yes, they bring the show to you. They were here from the beginning. They believed in the show. They believed in what we're doing, and, uh, you know, they're still around. So uh, hit them up, fivestarchemicals.com. Let them teach you all about the various ways to improve your beer. Because if you're not sanitizing and you're not cleaning and you're not doing those in reverse order and you're not using five-star <laughs> chemicals, you, you could be making better beer. I'm just going to say it, and uh, I think that's pretty clear. The beer right. is clear? The beer may not be clear. Who knows? You can have clean equipment and very hazy beer. You can. It, it may be intentional. Yeah. <laughs> I hope. I wish it wasn't. But uh, anyway, check them out, 5starchemicals.com. Ask for them at your local homebrew shop. If they don't carry 5 Star, you should really ask for it. Ask for it. Write the folks at 5 Star. Find out where you can buy it. If you, if you want to shop local, and that, you know, we understand that as well, uh, you know, check that stuff out. I mean, but not all hazy beer is bad, right, JP? I mean, Hefeweizen, for example, you are... Are you okay with that being hazy <laughs> Why beer? are we getting into this right now? Yeah. you got to start... You gotta start uh, Appreciate get right the, the haze. Uh, Get right to the point here. You know, I was gonna, I was gonna bring in some hazy cans of uh, oh, you know, haze God. bro beer, whatever the hell uh, beers. But I was like, oh, these guys aren't gonna, they're just gonna tear them apart. So you I'm, get a little yeah. haze in your saison, you just dump it out, or yeah, you can save those, save those cans for for less refined palates, please. <laughs> As we've established on this show numerous times, Keith, I am a super taster. Okay, so let's just uh, let's just get with that. We'll talk about haze later. Well, yeah, when I'm not in the room. Got a lot Please, of let's talk about, about that. <clears throat> let's talk about that. Um, before we get to any beer tonight, I do want to bring on uh, a special guest. A, uh, I'd say a, f- a friend of the show, but you know, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> Paul is from Sensor Share. Paul, are you there? Yes, this is me. Hello, man. How you doing, man? I'm very good. Thanks for having me on. I of really course. appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thanks for taking the time. You're all the way over there on the East Coast, man. It's late. I appreciate that. Yes, it is, but that's okay. This is one of the advantages of working with a college buddy is that he lets you sleep in in the morning a little bit and <laughs> there you get go. you ready for a podcast tonight. It works out really well. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. They'll uh, pass on our appreciation for sure. Oh, absolutely. I will. I absolutely will. So what have you guys been talking about so far? Uh, not a whole lot. We're talking about hazy beer and how much it turns my stomach, and uh, <laughs> that's about it. Um, but we wanted to get you on to talk about... Um, well, remote uh, digital hydrometers. Uh, you know, specifically, we we used to have the beer bug on at, uh, on, on the show um, as a sponsor, and they went away. And you guys are here, and uh, I want to talk to you about that a little bit about once Sensor Share is doing, and um, what the new product is, and what we're what yeah. we're what we're trying to do here as a as a community. 
Yeah, I'm right there with you. We're we're on the same page about that, and that's that is exactly. We are basically the the company that rose from the like we we rose from the ashes of what the the beer bug was, and that's mm-hmm. my silly metaphor. But but that's kind of we are coming in, and we've we've created this device, and we've we're really excited about the technology, and it's it, there's finally this digital hydrometer that really really does work. The brew perfect. Doing. So yeah. So what what are you wondering about it? Well, uh, just let me know, uh, you know, what, um, I don't know, what's, tell me who it's for, tell me, tell me a little bit about it, tell me how it works, if you can give me any patent relevant information that I can steal and start my own company, (laughs) that would be ideal. Um, But no, I I, I, I think we should just talk about really, you know, what what your goal is for the Brew Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so, so... Really, the best thing might be to give you kind of a little history of, of why we're here, because we okay. wouldn't be here if it wasn't for a number of reasons. And and that's one of the things. That's one thing we look at the beer bug as. It's you know, even though it was a device that that the beer bug itself did not work, it's be, that is the reason we're here today, which is really really good. So so about a year ago, um, a good friend of mine, a college friend of mine, Connor Trebor, and his dad Chris Trebor, um, Chris has. Chris works with a software company, and they were doing business with Parasitics. And Parasitics was the company that actually – they were the company behind the beer bug. Okay. Um, so Connor and Chris came in, and, and I don't know all the details, but I know that almost exactly a year ago, coming up, it'll soon be exactly a year, they, they um, put everything that they had into buying – that company because they really they they saw this idea they saw this technology this beer bug this digital hydrometer and they're like that's really cool but they were hearing everywhere that it wasn't working um and it was Hmm. it was just one of the it's it's one of those simple things where the idea was brilliant the technology was really cool um home brewers were getting really really excited about it and and it just it just didn't really execute if that makes sense sure yeah um nobody wanted to put bugs in their beer i guess (laughs) <laughs> exactly. There's something about bugs in the beer that you don't want. Right. Um, so it was. So they came in and they they ended up buying the company. Okay. Um, they rebranded it. They renamed it to Sensor Share. Um, and beer bug kind of is is a part of our past now. Actually, not kind of. It it really is. So yeah. they spent the last year and lots of money and lots of time and and a lot of back and forth and a lot of road trips and. And packing stuff in the back of their cars and and rebranding and redesigning, um, rebuilding this this device from the ground up, and it's really exciting. And then I came on, Connor and I have been friends since college, um, and I've been graduated. You know, I've been out of college now for for almost a decade, so I'm getting older as we speak. Wow. Um, <laughs> we don't want to talk about that. That's not what aging. we're talking about. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We can deal, we can we can we can reminisce about that later. But we but Connor and I have always been good friends. He actually brought me on in the last couple months and I I was sold. I mean one of the things we always got along one of the things we we linked with and and we connected with was the enthusiasm and Connor's um he's got a heck of an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit and um when he explained what he was doing, it's really it's really exciting. So, to where we are now, we've got this device that really is 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 not the same as the as the beer bug anymore. And this device is the Brew Perfect Wi-Fi digital hydrometer. Um, it is, and it's it's almost completely different, except for the core functions and and the basic the basic functions and and that core technology that was behind the beer bug that that made okay. the beer bug exciting wow so you guys are really just just retooled this whole thing retooled it we i mean we had to yeah. um, we had to rebuild it from the ground up and it's and the people behind the beer bug were very very brilliant people they were really they knew what they were doing they were technical minded people mm-hmm. there were some business minds there but it just when when home brewers tried to use the beer bug um, I never, I never used it. I didn't even know what a beer bug was before I came on to Sensor Share, and I quickly learned it just didn't execute, you know. And it was kind of like, um, from what I understand, it was kind of like a, you know, it was like a car without a motor. Um, and now we've, we've came back, we've, we've spent all that time, and, and Connor and Chris and really have dedicated themselves to, you know, they've hired this great team, um, and they've spent a lot of time and they've revamped it. So yes, it is a total rebuild. You put Retool. the motor in the car. Now you can actually drive it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I like right. that analogy. That's good. <laughs> it's a good one. Thank would, you, you. would you say it actually still solves the same problem, though? Or, I mean, are you still addressing? I mean, at, at its core, are you still trying to solve the same problem as the beer bug 
uh, did or you know the same market fit where you're you're, you're targeting home brewers and and the issue that they're having is they want to be able to track you know the fermentation and just you know that's 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 the core the, the core needs still here right so that i mean I think that's Absolutely. great and that's what's really exciting to me about i never had a chance to use the beer bug but that's what's really exciting about it was it you know gave you a way to watch sort of watch what's going on in your beer even when you know you weren't actually yeah, you know, and 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 that's why taking samples every every hour, right? right. <laughs> yeah, and and you know exactly. we should, we should talk exactly. about that you know as well, and that's why I wanted Paul on is to talk about this transformation that has taken place with that product and it's <clears> developed <throat> into the Brew Perfect because I think exactly right, Keith. Those core needs are still out there. People still want this uh, this information, and we've Absolutely. you know extolled the virtues of having a product yeah. like this for years on this show. And I wanted I wanted Paul to come on to talk about what it is now and what it what it wasn't before and what it what it has become. And and I think that's uh, I, I think it's pretty cool. I, I've always thought it was a cool idea, um, and I'm excited to to check out the Brew Perfect and and, and you know see. See what it does, man. See how it works. Exactly, and that's and and what that's exactly. I mean, Jason, that's you crushed it. That's how we felt, and that's <laughs> that's what made Connor and Chris. That's how they got so interested, and that's how they ultimately pulled me in. And and we've got Cassie, and we've got Margaret. We've got this great team. It's what you just said. There's this great idea, this really cool technology that makes it literally makes life easier for home brewers. Mm-hmm. And the only thing missing was that was that link between the technology and the actual efficiency and effectiveness of it Mm -hmm. you know what i mean and yeah and now and we've we've bridged that gap we've made we've taken all the technology and and those core functions and made it work so we've we've got an all new website an all new app for for apple and android um and this device and and i feel bad for not even describing what it does and and i'm sure you you guys already know and i'm sure many of your listeners already know but it's it it gives you accurate readings of of your temperature your specific gravity and your alcohol by volume throughout the entire life cycle of the beer so you don't ever have to open it up and you put our device in there and it sits there for as long as you want it to ferment and actually we just used it a couple weeks ago we brewed my first full batch of beer in my life and i tried it before when i was young (laughs) yeah um and i think jason i may have told you this briefly it was i tried it with my dad and Mm -hmm. we tried brewing beer when i was young and i couldn't drink it when i was young (laughs) <laughs> but it didn't turn out so well. Right. Um, so then we tried root beer, and root beer didn't go so well either. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, I know. So so our track record was zero for two for for the earlier part of my life, and then I went you know fifteen years without trying it, and then we just did it, and it was awesome. My wife and I took a trip to to West Virginia, and I was watching my beer ferment. Not literally that it was closed; it was in the fermenter. But yeah. I was watching everything that happened and. Um, it was an Oktoberfest that was supposed to have five and a half percent alcohol, roughly, and we just let it keep going, and now it's got close to seven percent alcohol on it. There. And so, <laughs> that sounds like we're not mad about it. Yeah, you're, you're a home brewer, dude. If you if you're you're brewing your batch of beer and it's fermenting, but it's not going quite as planned, you're a home brewer. Cool. Yeah, and I think for people that, that make beers like a, like Can a Meritzen, part of the club? yeah. <laughs> if you're making a, a Meritzen or other lagers, it's nice to know when you get down to that um, you know few points of remaining gravity that you want when you want to start going into your lager phase and uh, know exactly where it's at. And also for me, I'm someone who makes a lot of meads, and um, mm-hmm. in those you like to leave a little residual sweetness. So in some of them, if it's just starting to dry out to zero, you, I may want to stop the fermentation and, and make it, uh, you know, um, put some, leave, leave it, just kill the yeast and leave it uh, with some sweetness in it. And if you don't know where it is, you don't check every day, it'll, you'll, it might blow right past you if you're not able to watch it. Yeah, yeah I mean, traditional lagers, too, like the diacetyl rest happens at, what, 20 25% of fermentation left. And it's a great way to also detect there instead of having to take readings and, and sort of figure that out. And I'm sure yeah. earlier you said you went down to West Virginia, and there's there's some West Virginia jokes there. Some, yeah, I'm, from, I'm from Pennsylvania, so I, I, could, I could give you a lot of West Virginia jokes, you know, with that, but, you know, and why the alcohol is higher, or whatever, you know, blah 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 blah. Like, <laughs> there's uh, always a good West Virginia alcohol joke. Joke, I think. There, there was the one in there. I know you were, were going to say it. I'm waiting for you, but As- <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, Paul, I, yeah. I I appreciate you coming on, man, and and tell us about the Brew Perfect and and all that kind of uh, the good information that we need to know. And you know, and and I'll be look, I'll be quite honest. Uh, 
you know the the last company before Connor uh, took it over, um, you know we had some issues. We were giving away we were giving away products, and our listeners weren't receiving them. And we contacted Connor. I, you know, found his information. I was like, "Hey, my name is Jason. We're, we do this thing, whatever. I, I want to keep track." And Connor's like, "I had no idea this was going on. I'm not only going to make it good and give you give all your listeners their products." But we're going to be, you know, we're going to be launching this new product. And, we're, and so I got to talking to Connor, and, and I talked to Connor and Paul for about an hour, just about home brewing and, mm-hmm. and about how excited they were for the community to be kind of rallying around a product like this. And uh, they didn't have to do any of that stuff, like make good on the promises of the other company, but they did, and, and, and more so. And I, I just really respect that. And I, so I want to thank you guys again, Paul, for, for doing that for our listeners and for the, for the community, because that's, that's who these people are that are listening to the show. They're home, we're drinking homebrew right now. We're going to talk to a home brewer. Like, this is, this is who yep. we are, man. And, uh, you know, we want to know this information. And this is a key point for us. And uh, if we can get a product that works um, and that is, uh, you know, you guys, that has a, a, a manufacturer that stands by it as much as you guys have yeah. already without us even using it on the show, uh, I, I, I'm excited about it, and I, I really yeah. appreciate it. <clears throat> well, I imagine, too, it would, oh, uh, uh, sounding like the way it works, it sounds like it uh, would be also useful for pro brewers, too. So Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Absolutely. Well, we and, and, that's, and first of all, Jason, you're making me blush. I really oh, do yeah. appreciate that. Hey, man. That's what I do. <laughs> I really do. I mean, that's, that's, that's what we're doing. It's, it's my first time working with a, a, a very good friend of mine, and, and we're, it's my first time trying to you know, build a business. And we mm-hmm. want, we are, there's no way to do this other than stand it by it. We really appreciate yeah. you, you giving us all the time and being patient and being, that was a really fun conversation we had with you that time. And I'm looking forward to many more. Yeah, for sure. But, um, but yeah, we, and we want to get you, we want to get you a brew perfect hydrometer in your hands as soon as possible too. So you can try it out. Cool. But it's, um, that'd be great. But man. yeah, we, we, yeah, absolutely. And as soon as it, so just for anybody that's wondering for, for any of your listeners, or if you guys are curious, we have, um, it is being developed or it's being manufactured as we speak. All the development, all the website applications have all been um, redone and revamped, and that's all finished. But the actual devices themselves are still in the assembly line. Um, yeah. I'm sure they shut down production today. It's in Virginia, but <laughs> tomorrow morning they'll 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 kick it right back off, and they'll keep producing these these digital hydrometers, um, and they should be available for the first week of December. So a lot of people should be able to get them right by Christmas. Oh, that's awesome. You can, but, you can uh, pre-order them now, or where, where do you go to find more information about them? Yes. So you can go to brewperfect.com, mm-hmm. brewperfect.com. Um, this is our flagship. This is actually our only device that we can – that we have right now we're we're working on several others um and they should be available sometime in the next either six months to a year but this is our this is our flagship product this is what we're basing everything off of this brew perfect digital hydrometer you can check it out at brewperfect.com um for your listeners jason and for you well you guys are going to get one as soon as possible (laughs) for your listeners we have a promo code it's brewing 10 all caps 10 brewing 10 for anybody that wants to they'll get 10 percent off if they want to buy it they want to check it out um, wow. but that's, we've got it. I mean, it, it will be ready to go soon and all, everything's in place. We've got the foundation that I think the beer bug was missing. Awesome. And that was a, that was a key thing for us. So yeah, I hope so. You I, guys have I been awesome. To it. Oh yeah. Thanks man. I, yeah. I, you know, I appreciate it. Hopefully we'll see you next, uh, next summer at homebrew con in Portland or if you guys can make it over. Oh, there. we can't wait. Yeah. 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 Oh, we're, yeah, we, we're right now we're trying to decide, we're kind of fighting over who gets to go. <laughs> we're going to have to. We're going to have to settle it. I don't know how we're going to do it. We can do an old-fashioned Arm fist wrestling. fight or, or draw straws, <laughs> or we might have to just brew. Maybe we'll each brew something and submit it to you guys for judging. we got to figure go. something out. Hey, we would do that. Who's going. We would do that. All right, Paul, I'm going to let you go, man. I appreciate the time, of course, and uh, go get some sleep. Guys, thank you so much for having me on. Looking oh. forward to talking to you again. All right, yeah, man. Take you, it man, easy. Paul. Thank you all. Have a good one. Thanks, Paul. Paul Mikowski from Sensor Share, which is, of course... Brew Perfect Wi-Fi Digital Hydrometer. Yeah, man, I, I I thought that was cool. I was talking to these guys, and I'm like, we need to get you guys on, because not only does Paul have kind of a little radio voice going on, but uh, <laughs> but they, they believe in the product, man. And, you know, like I said, we've talked about brew bug a lot, uh, the beer bug or whatever it yeah. was. And, uh, you know, I, 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 felt, I felt like there was this hole of information where, you know, we kind of just stopped talking about it. And there's a lot of cool, interesting stuff happening behind the scenes, um, you know. Yeah, it, it was a very pr- cool, promising technology. But yeah, the, I think yeah. The, the execution could have been a little, a little better there. But uh, boy, if they've perfected that thing, that's going to be a cool deal. 
yeah, absolutely. I'm really excited to see how it actually fits into, like, say, Carboys versus Conicals and how that actually all works and, and where you'd put it. And, and e- you know, even that, you know, once you see that, like, who are they targeting, you know, like, which, wh- what level of home brewer are they really yeah. going after? Because it right. seems like, you know, it's a uh, super cool sort of an I- idea, and I think it can help people a lot to to get better at brewing and be more consistent and and sort of understand the fermentation process a lot. So I think it's pretty exciting to overall just to, to see it in action. So um, once it, it comes in, I'd be interested in even just looking at the product and, and kind of figuring out, like, how, yeah, how, does this fit, how does this fit into your brewing day and your yeah. brewing, brewing system? So. Well, it sounds like we'll have a Dr. Homebrew one that Brian won't hork. <laughs> Brian has the old I one. I do. So. I'm sure he'll, he'll use it for his meads, which will ferment for about like six, <laughs> yeah. six years or yeah. something. Oh, yeah. yeah. Keith, Brian's going to have yeah. first crack and he's going to do 12 meads with That him, 20% so. ABV sack <laughs> mead is finally ready, you guys. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what. We're going to take a real quick break. we got one commercial for you, and then we're going to be right back at it with some beer. We're going to be drinking some beer and talking to Brian and, uh, you know, not our Brian, but uh, another Brian. Anyway, it's Dr. Homebrew. We will be right back. Hello, fellow BNers. This is Sully from the 21st Amendment Brewery located in San Francisco, just two blocks from Giants Park. Before Nico and I opened the 21A and before I was a professional brewer, I homebrewed on my small four-burner apartment stove in a back house in Santa Monica, California, making my extract brews before graduating to the daunting idea of all-grain brewing. Homebrew books and information was hard to come by back then. The Internet hadn't been invented yet, along with other things we take for granted today, like electricity and potable water. One thing I wish I had back then when I was learning was a radio show that could teach me the ins and outs of brewing and answer questions that I had about homebrewing, a resource for making great craft beer. The 21st Amendment Brewery is excited to be a proud sponsor of Dr. Homebrew, a great show that teaches you what you need to know about making incredible beer. Good stuff. Listen up, you might learn something. I certainly did. And thanks for your support. Tasty Crack Games. Now, back to the examination. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Before we get Brian on, I do. I'm already on. To, oh, hey, Brian. What Hi. are you doing, bro? Oh, other Brian. Other Brian. What is this stupid? Oh, that's right. Uh, I do want to tell you guys about more beer. You guys know more beer. For years, the folks at More Beer have been leading the charge when it comes to cool and unique home brewing equipment, like the Robo Brew, the easiest way to brew all grain. Made from stainless steel, the Robo Brew allows you to make nine gallons of beer all in one vessel. From boil to mash to cooling, the Robo Brew truly is self contained. If you're thinking about getting into all grain brewing, you should seriously consider the Robo Brew. Or. Up your fermentation game with the all-new Fermentosaurus Plastic Conical. It has a 9-gallon capacity, a stainless steel stand, a sturdy butterfly dump valve at the bottom, and the best part is it will hold up to 35 PSI, so you can carbonate in this thing. Check out these awesome innovations and more over at morebeer.com. Cool. I saw the Fermentosaurus at uh, Homebrew Con, and it was, uh, it was pretty cool, man. Is it shaped like a dinosaur? I wish it was. That would gov- that would be much better. T-Rex little arms, like tiny little arms on the side. They market like, it towards awesome. four-year-olds. My son would love that thing. <laughs> hey, Brian, are you there? This is Brian. How you doing, man? Pretty good, you guys. Hey, you sound familiar. Have we talked to you before? <laughs> we have. Yeah, hey, Brian. How are yeah. you, Brian? How's it going? You Brian, said that, that uh, nice no, Meritson a couple shows Brian. ago? Yeah, yeah. I'm drinking another glass of that now. So. Nice. All right, perfect. Well, uh, we do have another beer from you, Brian. Which uh, which of Brian's beers are we drinking, Brian? Are we going to start with the the milk stout? I mean, that would make sensical order. Sensical, yes. Order is is key when you're a judge. <laughs> Let's see. We're going to judge the barrel stout or the. Uh, the milk stout first, yeah. Let's do okay. So we're going to hit the milk stout. Do you happen to have any of that in front of you, Brian? Yeah, I got a bottle myself that I put uh, nice. in the fridge about the same time I guess you guys got a bottle. So. Awesome. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, let's. Uh, is this, this is me there, Keith? No, I, I, no. I need to get you one right oh now. Oh, my God. Please. Oh. Never, never, never hesitate to give me beers. 
That's actually not true. Um, yeah, so we're going to do the milk stout. So, Brian, why don't you go ahead and start off on Brian's beers? Okay. This is going to get confusing here, but... Uh, <laughs> so, I think this was... Was smell this mine? It. Smell Just, it. Smell it. Yeah, that was yours. <laughs> yes, but make sure you're, you're smelling the right one. Yeah. So, in the nose, I'm getting a, um, a medium chocolatey malt, uh, some hints of... Dry roast, um, not giving much impression of sweetness on the top here. Um, no real hops to be noted. Uh, there's hints of some treacle and like a kind of a light roast coffee, not like a really rich uh, coffee. But uh, the esters seem pretty restrained in the in the nose. I'm not getting a big, huge flowery fruitiness in there or anything like that. Or you know, um, it's mostly just the malt. Uh, no, no diacetyl DMS. Um, it's it doesn't have that kind of. Sometimes you get that coffee and cream impression in the nose too on a on a milk stout, a sweet stout. I'm not really getting that. And there's a, a hint of something kind of spicy in there. I'm wondering if there's a little bit of phenolic going on, um, like a kind of a clove-like phenolic in the in the background. It's not real heavy, but it's kind of uh, something a little distracting in there. But uh, Appearance-wise, it's a dark brown. Seems fairly clear. Uh, from, hard to tell by the color, but you can see through it pretty well. Um, the it has a low light tan head that that had mostly finer bubbles. It stuck around pretty well. Not not stellar. Not it was just okay. Head retention. It, it didn't fade like instantly. So it stuck around a while. Um, then in the flavor, the um, I'm getting kind of a a diner coffee impression. Light chocolate with dry roast lurking behind that. Um, almost like a dry stout. <laughs> um, getting a light spicy phenolic behind the malt. It's, not again, not really heavy, but but there's a little bit of a kind of a clove-like thing in there. A uh, little bitterness. Definitely finishes dry and kind of minerally. Uh, the balance is, is still to the malt as it should be, uh, which is good. Coffee comes through in the aftertaste. And, uh, you know... Uh, kind of medium low esters. It's not like super fruity in the flavor either to me. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, kind of a ill fermentation with perhaps something else going on in there creeping in. But uh, yeah, just kind of dry, which was not to the style. Mouthfeel wise, I got a medium bit of astringency in there. Medium, medium light astringency. Um, it's just a bit biting and not as um, creamy and smooth as hoped. The carbonation was medium. Uh, no obvious alcohol warmth in there. Uh, kind of okay there. It shouldn't have a big boozy thing going on or anything. And medium bodied, which is fine. Uh, it's a, I felt it was uh, overall, you know, a decent attempt at a stout. Just kind of missing the mark on the the style that was declared for it. Uh, many of the desired elements of the sweet stout are are just not quite there. I want to get that kind of coffee and cream impression. I want to get a a little fuller, richer sweetness. Um, and it's just something is, is drying out the body of this beer a little too much. And, uh, I was just speculating that perhaps something could be getting loose in the beer. Um, and, uh, like a wild yeast perhaps. And that's bumping up some of those phenolic and spicy notes there, distracting from the, from the style as well. So, you know, I thought it was a, a pretty good beer. I gave it a, a 28 and, uh, yeah, that's where I landed on that one. Okay. Keith. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> uh, okay, so for, for me, for Aroma, I got some fruity pear esters. I thought they were actually around medium, so I got a little more esters than Brian did. Uh, I got some caramel, really faint roast. Uh, I also got a little soapiness, no hops, medium uh, toastiness, uh, some biscuit. Uh, and as, as Brian said as well, I got a, a, a hint of clove in the nose and... Some licorice, and you know, as it warms a little bit, I get a little alcohol as well in the beer. Hmm. Parents wise, I'd say it's deep brown, um, not opaque. Uh, so it's a little, I also thought it was a little on the light side for the style, um, but you know, maybe even a little too light. Uh, here's to have a fair amount of carbonation, uh, fairly clear. I already mentioned that, I think. Uh, light tan head, uh, long lasting. Um, Overall, I'd give it a two in terms of appearance. Um, Flavor-wise, uh, light malt, uh, notes of chocolate and biscuit. Um, really, the roast is, is, for me, very, very low, uh, almost non-existent. Um, the sweetness is medium. 
Uh, bitterness was medium low, but because of the dryness of the beer overall, I thought the, the bitterness came through uh, probably a little bit higher than I would like. No hot flavor. I uh, got notes of licorice again and clove, um, so it's not perfectly clean. and picking up a little of those phenols in the flavor. Uh, no diacetyl. Ester, esters are medium in flavor. Um, medium body. Uh, felt like it could have even a little bit more body for the style. Uh, carbonation was medium. Uh, lacks the, the big residual sweetness I would expect in a sweet stout. Um, light warming. Uh, really very low malt astringency. Overall impression, to me, it almost felt like like an imperial mild uh, more than it than hmm. it did a uh, sweet stout or even like a even a, you know it's not it's drier but I felt like it lacked the roast to be something like a dry stout. Uh, the roast was too you know the roast was too subdued. It wasn't sweet enough. Um, the the licorice sort of flavor was interesting, but I thought the the, the phenol was a little bit off. And uh, you know that that sort of clove phenol. So I'd watch, uh, you know, watch your sanitation there. Make sure you don't get any wild yeast uh, issues. Um, and uh, overall, I gave it a twenty-five. All right, excellent. Cool. All right, Brian, you're you're up, man. You have any questions for uh, for the homies over here? Yeah, well, I don't know. I think we we'll, might see this more in the next beer if we're going to do the next beer. But this beer is about a year and a half old. Okay. And I'm wondering if some of those clove flavors and stuff are kind of an oxidation or something that might be coming in later. Um, I'm drinking it now, and I remember it being a little bit different. But uh, mm. I'm just kind of wondering if clove taste com- can come from a, an aged type of beer, or is that uh, just something different that I never picked up before? My guess would be that, I mean, clove isn't really an oxidation flavor, but it could be a, a very light wild yeast infection. And when you first had it, like, you know, the, the wild yeast wasn't really going crazy in any way. And over time, it's been slowly eating away at the beer, and that would give it sort of the, the less residual sweetness and also just sort of more pronounced clove flavor. Oxidation would be more like a sherry note or or papery or cardboard or some of the things I would expect to see from uh oxidation but over time like the beer would change especially if there's like a, a very very mild uh you know infection okay uh, brian yeah and so this beer this beer is a party dial off of the next beer so it was the next beer of an imperial stout and this was kind of my party dial what should i do with the second runnings and <laughs> try to make it a sweet stout so, well, how um, could he? So we're we're going to do the Imperial Stout on the next show. Just push it out because we're up, mm-hmm. we're up against the time here a, a little bit on this show. Yeah. But well, what could we do? To, well, and it's also a year and a half. Yeah. I, just, I would just beer. not age this beer that long. How, yeah. how strong is the beer? Um, yeah, when I had it, time it uh, was about six point three. Okay. Went from a ten sixty one to ten fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's about right for the style. Yeah. You're getting a little. Keith was getting a little more alcohol than I did, I think. But I, I can get a little bit in there as it warms up. I mean, I, I was also questioning if it had, like, some rum in it. Rum. Yeah, or, like, bourbon. Nope. Like, because just these kind of darker, deeper flavors. Maybe it's that oxidation from I mean, a year and a half. Like a little sherry-like or something. Yeah, some, like some something. Of the, just some kind of refined alcohol. Yeah, Because I was getting some heat also. It's still kind of in my... oxidizing in there, yeah. Yeah, and it, do you guys think that is just age and, and Brian should just... Slam all these in one night. <laughs> <laughs> Although, yeah, like things like sherry, like, and that kind of come up in the stronger beers. Like, it's a, with a six percenter, you wouldn't think you'd get that much. It would turn into paper and cardboard before that. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think the thing with party guile, just in general, I mean, you're going to get less intense flavors, and you'll get you know some some residual sugars there. You know, like some. I'm sorry, you'll get some sugars from the you know the the second runnings, but I think. Even the the intensity of the roast kind of goes down as well. So if I were doing like a party guile for like a stout, and I don't know, I, I would consider actually even like steeping some dark malt or adding more dark malt in the sparge or, or something along the lines to, to bump up the dark malt a little more in the party guile because I feel like you may have some residual, you know, I keep saying the word residual, that's not really the right word, but you'd have some sugars left over. Remaining. Yeah, yeah, remaining yeah. remaining gravity, essentially, but 
You don't. You're really. You know, the the flavors also. You're, you're stripping out some of the flavors as you sparge or as you run off. So you may have more sugars left. And and in some ways, it's almost like more like a, a brown or something you could do from it. And maybe that's a little. It's a little too intense for that. But it's kind of trapped somewhere in between. I feel like a a, a brown and a and a stout like sort of thing. And and once again, a year and a half like roast also. Would, would it fades, yeah. Fades, yeah, it fades as well. Yeah, so. and then with the Portugal thing too, if you're, the second runnings are going to be a little more astringent naturally, it's, it's going to pull more of that husky nature out of the grain. Oh. Uh, whereas with a smooth, uh, silky milk stout, you're going to want that, that rich sweetness of the the more of the first runnings. I think I would think you know that's still. I'm sure when it was fresher, it tasted a lot better and would have scored a lot higher. You know, into the 30s. I'm sure. So it's just it's just gone gone downhill. It's not horribly oxidized, which is good considering how old it is. So um yeah, just just past its prime, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think even like Yeah, it's kind of I feel like this. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, I'm sorry, Brian. Go ahead, please. Oh, what were you saying? Uh, yeah, which Brian <laughs> here's like <laughs> which Brian should be yeah. speaking right now. Um no, what I was saying even with like a, a sweet stout like you know how to get a, a dark malt character and not make it too astringent, and like you can balance the amount of malt you use. And there's also methods of like, hey, let me add the the dark grain at the sparge, or or do a cold steep. And there's a lot of different ways to, to sort of get get flavors that that you're looking for there that don't give you too much astringency. I don't think that's really the problem here, um, but it could just be a matter of age, like like Brian Brian one or you Brian two. I'm trying to figure out which Brian I should call you. Koopa, uh, right? Koopa, yes. Uh, Go ahead, sorry, Brian. Uh, two uh, on on the on the phone. Uh, go ahead, continue, please. <laughs> Are we there, Brian? Do we lose him? Yeah, yeah. So, sorry, I missed. No. I, I missed what. The... That's all right. Uh, you were you were in the middle of something, uh, or you and Keith were kind of talking at once. So, what, what were you uh, what were you about to say? Oh, I don't know. I already forgot. That now, so. <laughs> we're good at confusing people. I mean, I guess I guess the question <laughs> is like, why? You know, were you were you trying to? We, are you intentionally trying to find a beer that you can age for this long, um, it, or do you just happen to have it around? Because I think that's kind of important. If you're doing a party guy, maybe a year and a half aged beer isn't that. Yeah, that no, that's why I just kind of happen to have around the the other beer that was the the focus of the beer. I meant to age out, um, but this one I just had to happen around. I thought, oh, it'd be fun to share here. Okay. Well, so. you're, you're brewing too much beer that you can't drink it fast enough. That's the, <laughs> that's a good problem to have. <laughs> right? Everybody, does everybody in the, like listening on the show like raise your hand if you're listening on the show and you don't know what party guile is? I don't think we ever explain exactly what. No, what, but I think we should save it for the next show. Party guy. Let's save it for the next show because it's Sounds because good. we're going to be talking about the original batch on that. So perfect. Yeah. yeah. Any 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 actual information? Let's not it's, give out right it's now. It's like a cliffhanger. Then yeah. the guy that that's walks true. into your party and says, "Hey, I'm the party guy." <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He has all the pills. Uh, Brian, thanks, man, for uh, sending this beer in. Uh, we're going to let you go, but, of course, we're going to talk to you probably in about 15, 20 minutes again. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. Thanks for tasting the beer and giving me some uh, pointers on it. Yeah. Cheers, yeah. Thank you, man. All right, we'll talk to you Bye. soon. Later. Cool. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. Before we take a break, have you seen the free Brew Guru app? We've talked about the Brew Guru app. It's from the folks at the AHA. It delivers sage brewing knowledge and money-saving deals at breweries, beer bars, and homebrew supply shops. You can find deals and save money on beer, food, and brewing supplies. Well, I just thought I said that. Uh, you can level up your brew IQ with hand-picked articles, proven recipes, and trusted resources from the American Home Brewers Association and Zymergy Magazine. And use the powerful brewery locator to find nearby breweries, tap rooms, beer bars, homebrew supply shops, and brew pubs. You can get the app today. It's free, of course, on the uh, Android and the iPhone, uh, whatever's whatever they're called, the phones, smart devices. Yeah. Go to homebrewersassociation.org, and you can learn all about it. Uh, it's a cool little app, man, and it ties in with your Zymergy, or not your Zymergy, your uh, AHA membership. So when you come into the, one of these places, that the app tells you that you can get 10% off wings or whatever. Is it also direct to, to like, um, places like uh, barbers where you can get your beard trimmed or that shaped? You should. Uh, I don't think so, but you should. So judging by their logo, I thought maybe. <laughs> you should uh, write that in as a, um, yeah. as a suggestion. Beard shaping bars. Yeah. 
Well, I don't have a need for that, but no. uh, some but fr- you could. friends of mine could. That's the thing. Uh, Brian, probably not. No. No? Not I, could, a, I could use that. But. You're not a beard guy? Not a beard grower? Yeah, that's all right. Hey, man, you know what? Emotionally, you're a beard grower, <laughs> and that's why we like you. Uh, okay, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back and uh, talk about some more stuff. Hang on. We'll be right back. Do you know the three most important rules in brewing? Sanitation, sanitation, and sanitation. And no one does it better than Five Star Chemicals. Five Star knows sanitation. You can only sanitize clean equipment. And Five Star knows how to clean, too. For craft brewers and home brewers, Five Star has what you need to keep your fermenters, serving tanks, kegs and draft lines sparkling and free of any beer-spoiling bacteria. PBW, caustic, acid cleaners, star sand, Santa Clean, lubricants and defoamers, pH stabilizers, and more. Five Star Chemicals has cleaning supplies, safety supplies, heat exchangers, pumps, hoses, and valves. And Five Star is proud to offer eco-friendly products that exceed customer expectations. If you you have a cleaning problem, you need the five star solution. Visit five star chemicals.com or call 800 782 7019. 800 782 7019 and get the five star treatment today. I'm sorry to tell you this, but we're gonna have to pour you out. Back to Dr. Homebrew. Hey, thanks for sticking with us, everybody. Brian Cooper has an important announcement to bring to you. Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop air drumming on the table. Uh, Is that really air drumming, though? Yes. That's just drumming. Just drumming, I guess. Drumming with a pen. Pencil. Pen drumming. Mechanical pencil. Pencil drumming. So, uh, yeah, White Labs. Have you heard about the two strains white labs added to the vault for homebrewers for the collection of specialty one-of-a-kind strains wlp 066 london fog ale yeast and wlp 073 artisanal country ale yeast are now available for pre-orders by visiting whitelabs.com slash the vault and once each strain reaches 150 orders white labs will release the yeast and ship it directly to your doorstep and it's going to be like hey surprise i'm here <laughs> The yeast will talk to you. Uh, there's good news for professional brewers, too. If you want to access any vault strains for your next brew day, just place a minimum order of 1.5 liters through yeastman.com or by contacting a customer service representative. Uh, are you all about the haze craze? That WLP 066 London Fog Ale Yeast is a great choice for those hazy New England-style IPAs that JP loves so well. <laughs> and WLP 073 Artisanal Country Ale Yeast is perfect for your next beer to God. Or other farmhouse style ale. Don't wait, homebrewers. Visit whitelabs.com slash the vault to learn more and place a pre order today. Very good. Look at that. <clears throat> You're a trained professional now. Well, we could have got Paul to read it. We'd be even better. That's, that's probably true. That is probably true. Okay, well, uh, in case you guys uh, have not been paying attention, we had one guest on today. Brian, that means Brian wins the Grog Tag. Hey, Brian. Gift certificate. That's pretty good for Brian. His beer is going to look good. His beer is going to look good. Uh, and if he's uh, after any water treatments, he can get the eye dip. The mm-hmm. Smart Brew Water Testing Kit. Home or commercial use, everybody. So if you're looking to graduate into pro brewing, God damn it, get an eye dip. You can use it now, you can use it later, you can do all over the place. It pairs via Bluetooth, ups your, updates your water uh, results instantly, and you can email the results to the rest of your brew team or post it on your Facebook page and your homebrew club. Get the lowdown on your base water profile. It has the ability to test over 40 different water quality tests, and I think you can do stuff like um, like pool water and shit like that, too. Which I think would be kind of cool. If you got a pool and you want, yeah. you know, you can... Uh, you, like, use it on your hot tub and detect if someone's peed in your hot tub. <laughs> any pee. What's the... <sighs> that, might be, that might be the 41st test. We'll see. Too much yellow. <laughs> uh, alkal- you can test for total alkalinity, chloride, calcium hardness, pH, sulfate, and more with only four mils of water needed for each test. So check it out. Go to smartbrewkit.com, enter code TBN10 at checkout and save 10 bucks on either mm-hmm. the standard or advanced smart brew testing kit. Yeah, those guys are cool. Have you guys yeah, taken the like pH em. of your urine before? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, can't no. say it. I, I do have pH strips at home though now, and you've given me a great idea for after the show. Keith is a party guy. Start with uh, why, why you would know, you do pregnancy that? test, and then oh, yeah. pH strips, and do, it, do the whole thing. I mean, uh-huh. That's probably what a pregnancy test is, right? I mean, it's I don't know, pH. I don't know what is it. Oh, I, I, I imagine it, there's some sort of it enzyme tests for the, or the some pregnancy hormonal. hormone. I think. Yeah, something. How do? Hey, how Siri. do pregnancy tests work? <laughs> Uh, a hormone, yeah, called human coronic gonadrophin. Nice. <laughs> gonadrophin. Or <Nice>. HCG. <laughs> JP, your gonadrophin is off the charts. Thanks, boo. <laughs> oh, whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, man, I'm, uh, I'm excited, boys. I, I'm driving down to Disneyland tomorrow. And for your birthday? Not for my birthday, no, no. Uh, but we are we recording. So I do the Ears Up podcast, which is yeah. a Disneyland podcast. We're recording our hundredth episode at, at Ralph Brennan's in downtown Disney on Saturday. Wow, it's kind of cool. We rented the pl- rented the uh, the balcony out, and we're gonna I don't know, fucking hopefully not shit the bed for two hours. <laughs> uh, so I'm nervous about nice. it, man. So I've been doing a lot of work on that, and I got to go home and do a bunch more work tonight. Where do we listen live for that? How do we? It's not going to be live. But, okay, uh, you know, but you can go to earsuppodcast.com. dot com. E a r z e a r z hyphen p o d c a s t dot c o m. There's an up in there somewhere. Are yeah, you, are, on that true. show, are you doing a cross promotional thing for Doctor Homebrew as well, or how does that work? Of course, yes, of course I am. Of course, why would listen I? to all our other podcasts? Yeah. Disney people, <laughs> that's right. It's the, out there. Listen to Doctor Homebrew. All you dads yeah. that are headed over to Germany to get wasted. Here's a podcast. Uh-huh. Is a proud supporter of the Brewing Network's Doctor Homebrew. Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> but I, you know, there are like crossover listeners, which is kind of yeah. cool. Like every once in a while, nice. I get an email from people like, "Oh, I've heard about you from the Brewing Network." I'm like, "Oh, that's cool." But uh, people are paying like fifty bucks <laughs> to fucking come and see this, and I'm just wow. Yeah, I know. So I'm like, "Oh shit!" It's in two days. I gotta. And the charm lessons are tomorrow. Uh, if right, it's hard. It's hard not dropping the occasional f bomb <laughs> on that show, man. <laughs> Fucking mouse. It's tough, man. Well, and then we do, so like we have Patreon, which is like crowdfunding, but it's yeah. not, it's like a monthly donation thing. And we do a, a secret show where we drink and we do Disney news and we curse on there. And sometimes you have to stop and remember <laughs> what show am I actually doing right now? Because it's all the same fucking content. Nice. Yeah, it's crazy, man. But uh, I'm excited about it. It's going to be a good well, time. Congratulations on the 100th. Thank there, you very yeah. much. It's right pretty on. good. Three years of fucking radio shows, man. Um, before we get out of here, Great Fermentations, GR8 Fermentation, they are on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, but they're also on the internet at greatfermentations.com. They offer top-notch customer service, same-day shipping on many items, and probably the best thing, the largest catalog of Blickman products on the web. So if you're into Blickman products and you want to know how to use them, you want to purchase them, go to greatfermentations.com, follow them on all the socials. Uh, they're good folks. Is that it? Are we done? That's it, bro. All right, we're done. Thanks for listening, people. Yeah, nice. if you're listening, nice. if you're listening live, uh, just you know, give us about five minutes, and we'll be back on with Brian and talking about his party guy beer, and talking about what answering the burning question that Keith posted: What is a party guy system? And then I think Keith has some more beer for us. I believe, yes, Brian, Brian, and Brian do. Uh, we oh shit, we have beer. Nice. It's going to be a good show. All right, everybody. uh, Thanks a lot for tuning in. And until next time. Send JP uh, a birthday beer. Send JP a birthday beer. I almost did my sign out for my Disney show. That's how (laughs) stupid I am. Keep your ears up. Here, I'll do it right now. All right. Until next time, everyone. We'll see you in the parks.